realize that the Congressional Black Caucus grew out of uh, people who participated in SNCC. And um, that's how we, we got several uh, congresspersons elected and working quietly through networking behind the scenes. And um, still close to today. Hurt Park was a, was uh, an effort uh, and a place of meeting where we wanted to include uh, the other Georgia State institutions, uh, meaning you know white institutions where a lot of people wanted to become involved, and so it became symbolic of uh, places where we would have rallies and trying to build up support uh, from the general community as well as from just the student uh, community. And there were several rallies that were held there, and uh, sometimes they were contentious. And, and But we always had worked closely with the police department. Uh, Herb, Herb, Herbert Jenkins was the uh, police chief of Atlanta. And um, because we were, quote, the city too busy to hate, they did everything they could to keep from, you know, to protect us and keep, keep uh, us from being attacked. But uh, we... And plus, it was directly across from uh, the municipal, uh, not municipal court building, but we, the convention center was what it was, basically, but it was a, uh, an enclosed uh, structure, and as well as one of the, the uh, major fire departments that was held in, uh, that serviced the downtown area. Um, and... Um, it was that, uh, after the many of the movements, uh, sit-ins and so forth were over. It was a, a common place that we could meet and greet. Any memories of Lev's or Dobbs House, Tottle House, or Crystal's? Uh, we were only, uh, uh, those of us who were concentrating on city buildings and on riches did not participate in those sit-ins, but we, we were informed of them by those people who did uh, get arrested in those different places. Tell us a little bit more about the uh, campaign, This Christmas Give Freedom. Oh, that was one of the um, uh, programs that we use in order to get uh, the general community to boycott and not to buy. Uh, they were so sure that that was not going to work. Uh, but the people who saw that we were persistent uh, and that we were um, belonged to families that had charge cards at the various uh, department stores, particularly the riches, that our parents were beginning to um, be very supportive. Ours was, parents were very supportive from the very beginning, uh, but they were going to use that at, to show us that we were not as forceful as uh, in charge as they thought we were. So um, uh, the movement asked everybody to turn in their charge cards, and we kept them uh, in safe places, and nobody bought. So by Easter of that year, uh, we're going to do the same thing again at Easter. You know, you had to have a new outfit for Easter, and from head to toe. And, of course, Richards and, and uh, all the stores in the downtown area, uh, that was the main season uh, for their, their, their sales. And it was then uh, that they realized uh, when we they were not buying anything uh, at the department stores and we were wearing the same clothes that we had worn the year before, they became a, like a badge of courage. Uh, that, that finally broke the backs of the uh, uh, business community, and that's when they decided, that, uh oh, we better solve this immediately. And that was when I was invited to Riches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, tell me. Well, one thing was that that uh, we made sure uh, that we were not going to be be uh, looked at as uh, ragamuffins, and that we were going to be organized. In fact, the days that we were going to be arrested, um, we always wore high heel shoes and white gloves and so forth, and uh, we looked like. Uh, 
that's the way we were brought up by our parents. If, if you're going to do something important or you're going to church or you going to a meeting, you put on your white gloves and your high heel shoes. And, and um, since I was a, a protege of, of the fashion industry, I made a dress especially for going to jail. And that's the dress that, that uh, you see me in uh, with my little skinny legs and high heel shoes marching along. Um, and um, all of us did the same thing because that was the way we were college students and we were proud of, of the fact that we were in school. And it wasn't until later that, uh, you know, when Hosea became involved that the badge of courage became overalls. And so we, you know, quickly adapted to that on the occasions that we needed to, but we still maintain our decorum and uh, we were ready to, if we were gonna die, we were gonna die dressed up. <laughs> Let's talk about the Atlanta Enquirer. The Atlanta Enquirer was, uh, as I said before, grew out of the English departments getting together to write the Committee on Appeal for Human Rights. And after that was done and presented in, t in the newspapers, uh, we had some benefactors who uh, paid for ads to be in all the major um, uh, newspapers. Um, when it was so well written uh, that, that it was entered into the uh, Congress of the, uh, the, the Congress of, what do you call it? Congressional record, Washington. congressional record, and and the, the one a lot of the uh, uh, people who read it said that no college students, no black college students could have written that, um, and we were real lucky to uh, once it was all condensed down to um, a one-page document. Uh, thanks to Rosalind Pope, we were able to uh, use that as a roadmap, and. We used all of the different points, and, and it's amazing how those same uh, fallacies that existed then still exist in housing, low income, poor education. You know, it's just a, it's been a cycle over the years. But uh, because of the Daily World's uh, emphasis on trying to destroy the movement and the negative publicity that we got from the Atlanta Constitution and the Atlanta Journal, uh, we, uh, along with the leadership of, of, of uh, Mr. Holman, M. Carl Holman, decided that we needed to uh, have a vehicle to pass out to the community and let them know exactly what we were doing so that we could build a community-wide base, and that's how it got started. And we met many nights uh, and we, we made it a weekly, um, working on various stories and, and uh, using statistics that we had researched. Again, using the same organization that we use for social action and uh, social work in the community as a basis. And that's how, and it still exists today.